the overall transformation that we're just now starting is well beyond, I think, most people's wildest expectations. It's such a mind-blowing experience being in an actual Model Y that's out of the factory, driven around in South Austin. That, like, it literally blows my mind. It's unbelievable that the best-selling car, or the second best-selling car technically, because the RAV4 is the best-selling car. It's just whipping around South Austin. And how good marketing is that going to be for Tesla's brand? Like, I think this could be kind of a rise, rising Phoenix moment for Tesla, where they've all this Elon politics drama. And then in some ways, there's no such thing as bad press. And a lot of attention went on Tesla. And I've been like holding out on this theory of like, it's going to swing back. The pendulum always swings, which seems crazy. But I think the robo taxi is going to do it. Like once people are like, oh, Elon, he came up with the self-driving car, like that crazy tech guy. And that's going to be make people want to try Teslas. And they're like, wait, I could buy my own robo taxi. Like even me going back to Seattle, looking at my friend's Model Y, being like, he has a robo taxi. Like, this is crazy. Like he bought that for like 55 grand or whatever, including FSD. Like that's, it, it's such a good deal, especially once they released uh, unsupervised. So I feel like I'm curious what you guys think. Like, will this kind of be a big needle mover for actual sales of vehicles now? And kind of this turning point of the Tesla brand is RoboTaxi. Like what you were saying, Chris, like people in Austin are just like, this is sick. It's, you know, people are talking about it. Like my sister calls it the way moves. And she's like, oh, way move is so annoying. Like, I can't wait for RoboTaxi. Like people are like, it's just, it's kind of exciting and cool to see like that optimism return to the Tesla story, you know? Yeah. I, I did have a couple conversations with people um, that were surprised that it was the same car that you could buy. Um, I posted one on X with this and Sawyer was with me, this family from Australia and they were talking about, you know, the, the robo taxis. They were like, Oh, it's so cool. We're, we, we've taken a Waymo, which was really cool. And I was like, yeah, it's the same car you can buy. I, I own that car. Like, and Sawyer does too. We own that, that car. And like the robo taxi car, it's like, yeah, it's the exact same car. We don't have that software as of right now, but it's physically, it's the same car that pretty much anyone can buy. Um, so people do get excited about that. Yeah. The way that, I think about this right now is kind of almost as an analogy to AWS in some ways that, you know, what Jeff Bezos and Amazon did with AWS was they had to make, you know, all of the primitives for doing apps and internet things online easy. So you have your storage, you have your compute, your networking and servers and all that stuff. And you like have to break each one of those down into its core element and do a, a primitive for that. And then you let people just kind of build on it. And eventually that thing turns into, you know, a huge transformative platform for the internet. And then obviously Amazon gets a major tailwind uh, to their business from that. And the, the RoboTaxi that Tesla's launching is a new primitive for transportation that, you know, Waymo is kind of aiming at that, but it's not just removing the driver from the seat that achieves the actual new primitive for transportation. You have to do all of the things when you do that to make your cost two times, three times, four times, five times cheaper than a human driven gas powered car. And, you know, Waymo just hasn't done that yet that between the cost of the vehicle itself and then their limited scale and the limited growth rate that they have that, you know, I mean, we don't know this for sure, but I would be willing to bet dollars to donuts that their actual all in cost per mile today is at or above an Uber or a Lyft. And so that's the thing where it's like, yes, maybe they're on a path eventually to be cheaper than Uber and Lyft on a per mile unit economics basis. But I think Tesla is going to be there or close to there very, very soon. And then obviously growing rapidly. And so then is like, there's the ride hail piece of like a whole bunch of new things become possible on top of that transportation that is, three or four times cheaper than anything else available. And it's not just driving people around, it's also goods and, you know, delivery of uh, all sorts of different things. <clears throat> and so it's just, yeah, like it's going to be really hard to predict in advance exactly what all use cases are going to 
emerge for the service um, and also the overall size of the TAM because, you know, a lot of people are thinking of it as like, this is just a fraction of current ride hail. And you know, I think the, the total addressable market for transportation that's four times cheaper than current transportation is, you know, many multiples of current ride hail. And yeah, then especially when you apply that technology to semi trucks and you're able to do for, you know, transportation of all goods, um, what you've done for ride hail services, like the overall transformation that we're just now starting is well beyond, I think, most people's wildest expectations. If you sort of think about what what does this do as far as the cachet for Tesla or the cachet for Elon Musk, right? Like all the, these are like the technical, th- this is like the technical viewpoint of why this thing is going to win. When you think about like public acceptance or like sort of like the revival of it, what how it manifests is Tesla's ability to run a Super Bowl commercial with a car literally driving coast to coast without a driver and saying you can buy this for $38,000. That's the manifestation of it. And that manifestation is an undeniable technological feat. Undeniable technological feat, right? And that is what got Elon so popular in the first place, is that he would do undeniable technical feats. Making an electric vehicle profitable, that's sick. Like people literally thought it was impossible. Possible. Reusable rockets. Impossible. Nope. Possible. Okay. Coast to coast driverless. Impossible. Nope possible and you can buy you can buy it you can go buy it right that that is the kind of thing that's going to spark that uh that revitalization and it's heavily dependent on them actually reaching the the safety threshold to be able to do that so the question becomes how far away are they from that are they or even if it's just like driving around austin it can just be an extended drive where a normal person can be like holy shit i can have that in my driveway Right. That's going to supersede any political noise we've gone through, any America party, any Trump is on the Epstein list. It doesn't matter. People just want cool shit they can afford. 80% of people just want cool shit they can afford and they can forget about. Dude, if if politics ruined things truly, Disney wouldn't exist, but light wouldn't exist. Amazon wouldn't exist. Apple wouldn't exist. Oh, there's kids mining cobalt for your phone. Right. And in, in the Congo, Apple would have collapsed. No, they're freaking they're perfectly fine. And it's a shame that that's the truth. But that's but it's that's an example. Amazon Bezos has slaves in the warehouses. OK, everybody's got prime. All right. So it's like it's there just has to be undeniable value for money. Undeniable. That is what wins the hearts of people ultimately. And that could be a commentary of like, OK, people are kind of fucked up. You know, it's like they're willing to forget these like terrible things. But like if you compare what Elon did versus the other narratives, oh, Elon just said things I don't agree with. Right? So how what is the sticking point of that? Doesn't seem doesn't seem very strong. I, th- I think the real demo, no one really cares about driving, you know, coast to coast driverless. The real demo is uh go to sleep in LA, wake up in Vegas. Or or come pick me up from the bar because I'm shit faced. And I don't want to pay an arm and a leg to get home because of Uber surcharge pricing. I think it would be cool if they did one with like a horse because your horse used to be your self-driving car and like take you home from the bar drunk and they had like some cowboy in the Wild West and then they'd made like a kind of Texas tech sort of new cowboy in the Wild West. But it's like that's a Texas demo. Your your, like car pulls up. Yeah. Like (laughs) there's a lot of potential here. I mean, that robo taxi video they dropped is so sick. Like I've probably watched it like a hundred times. Like it's like one minute on YouTube, (laughs) like just like. And somebody tweeted, like, how could you watch this and not invest in Tesla? And I like that hit me. I was like, damn, like, honestly, I, you're right. Like, this is so sick. Like, they're showing you what it is. Like, was that moment for you guys more sort of mind blowing than actually riding in the robo taxis? Because for me, it kind of was because th- there was no safety monitor and it went on highways and it did the whole 30 minute drive with nobody in the car. To me, that was like, holy crap. That was sort of more of a mind blowing moment almost than testing out the beta robo taxi service. For me, it was, I think the robo taxi was more mind blowing because I, I've been using FSC and AP and autopilot for so freaking long on the highway where it's like, yeah, of course it can do that. Of course. Like I've seen it, like it does it perfectly mm-hmm. for like, it's done a year. Like, of course you should have yanked me away from the driver's seat years ago. Right. Um, I think, I think in the actual city was for me specifically was a bigger deal, but I think for the masses, I think for the masses, that video is going to, going to have a huge impact long-term. 
because it's like it really just highlights how groundbreaking this is. Yeah, there's there's how, a little more there's a little more magic when nobody is in the yeah. car for sure because you know the safety monitor thing. I get it. I'm glad they're being safe. That's number one for sure. But it lets a lot of people discount what's actually happening. And, you know, if you know nothing about what's going on and then you see some guy like holding his hand on the screen as the car is driving down the road, you're going to be like, what, what is going on here? Um, it's, it's not as impressive, right? If you don't know the whole story. So, yeah, I think that video of having nobody in the car, it drives all the way, um, is very impactful. And that day when the safety monitor is removed is going to be huge as well, because, I agree. You know, the haters are going to continue to hate and move the goalposts and say something else, which is fine. Like, uh, that's always funny to look back on, you know, when <laughs> some time passes. But uh, as of now, it 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 does kind of leave a little bit of like, yeah, there's no driver. But, it, you know, this guy is sitting here like watching every move, uh, you know, ready to do something at, at any second. Um, and it just it just takes away a little bit of the magic. That's all. It's low-key kind of awkward just having those people just <laughs> quietly sit there in the front. Well, at least I can't yeah, talk to you at all. So that is that is a little bit more awkward than having an Uber driver. It's like they're there, but there is, you know, this invisible wall. Yes. It was have stupid. you guys tried giving somebody food? Maybe that's the thing. Maybe they're just hungry, guys. They're <laughs> no. just hangry. They don't want to talk to you. No, I, 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 donut. I did. I did have one when I was live streaming on X and he chimed in. We were talking about their hand on the button and he chimed in and he's like, oh, my favorite conspiracy theory is that we have Neuralink and we're driving the car with Neuralink. And I'm like, yo, he's he's talking. <laughs> we got the inside scoop. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Gally, I saw you came off me. Did you want to jump in and say something? Uh, no, well, I was just going to talk about how it was a little awkward with the guy in the front seat, but, and I'm curious, like what they are saying, like after work and they're all meeting up and they're telling stories about like the day, like <laughs> how they're these talking people about are insane. It. Yeah, they're they're, these fucking Tesla, Tesla nerds are insane. Tesla YouTube people are, <laughs> these dudes are so weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was the whole time. I'm like, get me the fuck out of the car. This is crazy. What are these people doing? Oh man. Um, what comes first, uh, yanking the safety rider or geofence expansion? Geofence. geofence. Yeah. I think yeah. geofence too. Why? Just seems like a low, it seems like an easy thing. Like Waymo's already expanded. They, and then, then you can have the safety person checking out and making sure that new zone expansion is going okay. Yeah. So is the idea here then to expand Austin as much as possible, then yank the safety rider, then go to a different city? Is that how you guys are viewing the expansion? Yeah, I think it's fair. Yeah? Go north of the river. That'll be a big step forward. Yeah. I, would I like, like for that. them to go to suburbs. Yep. Yeah, I think Austin, sub, like Austin metropolitan area, um, and aren't they legal in all of Texas? Or maybe I heard that Correct. wrong. But, yep. okay, because I feel like in some ways, I would just do that. Like Texas and I guess Silicon Valley and LA seem like obvious next ones, but I don't know, like California, I feel like is a trickier situation, but like just the idea of taking over the Austin metro area and making that a huge business and crushing it there seems like right, like right for the taking kind of. Well, and Tesla's got to already be kind of taking over that area, right? With how much they've grown and how many employees. I mean, so many people in Texas now work at Tesla. And they're such a huge part of the local area and they've made it better, right? So now having the robo taxis make it even more better uh, is kind of a, a, a nice next step. And I think a lot of like the expansion and things um, is going to rely on totally guessing, but their next updates that they do software wise, which now it's going to get a little weird for us because on our personal vehicles, we haven't really had any changes to FSD in you know a long time. And who, that might continue, right? I mean, if they're trying to do RoboTaxi and make it safe and better and expand it, why are they going to send us another update that, you know, makes it slightly better when it's already so good? Um, so we may now be having FSD updates having, happening to RoboTaxi, and we don't, we have no clue what's going on. We're not going to know the software version. We're not even going to know an update happened. Um, and so my guess is that, um, and it's a, a little bit of a pessimistic take, but um, my guess is that overall they didn't get the software quite as far as they wanted. And they also didn't want to miss the June deadline that they've been, you know, talking about for like what, six months now or something. Um, and so I think a lot of, you know, removing safety people, 
expansion and all that is going to rely on what Elon, I mean, Elon was saying it on X, how they're going to have the four X parameters or, you know, all these different things he's talking about. Um, And who knows exactly what it's going to take for that uh, software to be trained or Mm -hmm. how much more data they need to put in to even train the software. Uh, So, you know, my uneducated guess is that they're looking at, okay, let's get this next step or let's move on to version 14 or, you know, whatever they call it internally. And that is going to be the huge stepping stone because as of now, I mean, we know we've been using FSD for a long time. We know it used to suck. And then I got like, yeah, this is not bad. And now it's at the point where it really does pretty much everything. And most of the things you do as a human in the car is personal preference. Whereas when you're in the robo taxi, you can't, there's no personal preference anymore, which is great. So you can really see what it's capable of, really see that it is or isn't going to mess up or whatever. Um, so I, yeah, again, I just really think they want that next step, the next update, the better version of FSD. And that's when we'll really see things go crazy. And again, if their vision works out the way they've talked about this, uh, you know, smaller geofence or just 11 cars or whatever in X amount of time is just going to be meaningless. It's going to be a blip, you know, in time as they explode these vehicles all over the place. Well, maybe that's not the best thing to say, but (laughs) as they launch lots of Teslas on roads all over the place, right? (laughs) 